Welcome back inside the Now Morning Show. I hope that you have your tea, you have your coffee, and you are ready because HDC is in the spotlight this morning. With HDC's updated portal, housing has been made easier. To securely access your housing application reference number, log in to the hdc.gov.tt. Then click Sign In, enter your username and password. Look under my application and you will find your reference number. To change your password, click on the user registration tab, then click reset password, enter your new password twice as shown, then enter your password hint, then click submit. To update your personal information, click on the user registration tab and there you will find the personal information page. Make your necessary changes then click save. To calculate your mortgage payment, on the home page, click on mortgage calculator, enter the required information and click calculate. It's fast and simple. It's housing made easier. Housing made easier. Now the online housing application fulfillment system portal is the primary channel for public housing applications. The Housing Development Corporation determined that an update to the system and clean and well, they actually wanted to update the system rather and clean up the database as it would help both the Ministry of Housing and Urban Development and HDC to properly assess and allocate homes to eligible persons. And so joining me to talk more about this is Divisional Manager of Corporate Services at HDC, Mr. Jeremy. Me, Campbell. Mr. Thank Campbell, good morning. Thank morning, you for morning. joining us on now. Thanks for having me. <laughs> now, this new system, tell me when it was launched and what is the purpose of it? Is it really just to clean up or mm -hmm. is it to ensure that, you know, people who want these homes can have access to them? So the system is actually not a new system. It was launched before, but this is actually an update. What we are trying to do is to bridge the customer experience. We want to ensure that customers have an easier way to see where they are, where they are in the allocation process. We want to ensure that customers know that AGC is listening. We know that Applying for a home is a very long, tedious process for some. So this process allows customers to see where they are in the application process, understand where they are, and actually become an allocations officer. You could actually update your system. You could actually update your salary. All the things that we normally would do in HGC, the system allows the customer to do that. Now, when you uh, go to HGC or when you went before, mm. they would give you a card with that number <coughs> and that username. Mm. Is that the same card that you're using to access the system? It is the same card, but we understand that some customers may have lost that card over the period of years. Um, but what the system allows customers to do, you can actually go on the help slash support button, click that, send your information to the ministry, and they will then send you an email with the, all the updated credentials. So it doesn't matter if you lost the card. It's just a matter of us getting the customers to try the portal. And if they don't want to try the portal, they can still come to the office to get the information. What kind of features can we see on the portal? So there are a lot of features. The, the main feature that I like, um, because of our background, is the financial calculator. What this calculator does, it allows the customers to update their salary, their income. It allows you to play with it. So if, if your salary is 10000 or less, you could actually say, okay, if I pay off this loan, how much would I qualify for? If I add somebody and their income is X, this is what I would qualify for. And it actually says, if you don't qualify, you get an alert say, okay, mm -hmm. you don't qualify. Or if you qualify, these are the areas you would qualify for. It lists all the areas that are currently available. You can also add a co-applicant or remove a co-applicant. We know that sometimes persons may have applied with a boyfriend or someone who they may have been with years ago. Now they are not with them anymore. So it allows you to actually remove that person and it makes the, 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 the housing application process more seamless. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of the um, updated info, is it that you can go and update all your info? Like, do you have to have, let's say, a scanned copy of your ID to upload to the system as well? So you can. Um, it's not necessary because once you go onto the portal, everything you can just enter. Once you have, you have to remove an, applic uh, an applicant, then you may have to update those, those information. But this is just a way for you to update your information. So you don't have to really scan any documents. If you want to remove someone, you will have to send out a declaration because you can't just remove a co-applicant like that. You need to get permission. Mm -hmm. But other than that, it's just ready to input the information. And all of us right now live on our phones. So you can actually do this on your phone, your tablet, your computer. So it really bridges that gap between the customer and the HEC. Now, if you're on this site and you're getting problems, is mm -hmm. there a help desk that you can reach out to to assist you in the process? Yes, there is. This, the same um, help slash support button that's on the logon page. Once you have any issues, the logon, the password, the username, just simply click that button and it takes you to the ministry's portal and they will then send you all the information you need. It's very, very simple. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, earlier you mentioned that this is to um, ease with the customer experience. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, is it that you're trying to get people, you know, away from coming down to the offices? 
it's not that we're trying to get customers away. We realize that we're in a post-COVID world. Obviously, all international and local companies have been driving towards technology, and AGC is no different. We want to ensure that customers, they, they, when they apply, it's easy. You no longer have to come into the office. But if you want to, you can. So it's not that we want to get customers away from the office. We want to make that situation easier. If you get a job, you may not have the time to come to Port of Spain or come to San Fernando to update. Simply pull out your phone, update, and we get the information. Yeah. Because the reason I ask that question mm. is that people, everybody may not have access to internet. Exactly. And I know that the, the older generation as well, they love that face-to-face -face exactly. <laughs> connection. They do, they do, so they, they want to come in and pull do. that number they do. They do. and they talk to somebody. So they that do. service that's is still, still available. That's still possible, yes. Okay, that's nice. Still, yeah. I was reading about the Omni Channel um, mm. to make payments. Can you tell us some more about that one as well? Right. So what we have been trying to do, again, um, to get customers to make payments to AGC, um, because the unfortunate perception is that an AGC also is free, which is not the case. You need to pay for your, your unit. You need to pay your license to occupy your rental, your mortgage, right? So we know, again, it's difficult for some persons to come to Port of Spain to make payments or go to Maloney or go to San Fernando office. So what we did, we have engaged a, a, a supplier, Shopee, where customers can go there, they can make the payments, we get all the information from them. Shopee is based mainly with, with Massey, right? So you, when you make buying your groceries, pay HGC. We want to make sure that when you're paying for your your daily items, HGC is at the top of the list. <laughs> pay your mortgage, pay your yes. rent, buy your groceries, pay for your car. But this cannot be done online, so you still have to make payments at a short payout outlet, or can you also make payments online now, for so, example? Right, so the good thing is that we're actually in phase two. We are going to launch the, the ability for persons to go online and, and add AGC as a PE. So this is something that's going to be rolled out in the next couple of months. But we started the process already, but right now, you go to Massey, any short pay um, outlet, and you make the payments. Now, as I understand it, this uh, the update to the system is just one of the ICT projects that the HEC um, is actually embarking on. Mm -hmm. Can you speak to the other ICT projects that we can see coming up? Right. So one of the major the major Pro major product is, is Yadi. So Yadi is something that allows the AGC to track where customers would have, would have been making payments. Yadi is an online portal where we could see what you paid, when you paid, if you paid off the AGC, if you're in a res, all these, all these facilities. If you have a rental unit and you want AGC to fix your, your, your leaks or your, your plumbing or anything like that. So Yadi will allow customers now to send information to us. We will be able to track it from start to finish. So it, although we have Yadi right now, it's an updated system. So all the, the upgrades of AGC right now is to ensure that the customer experience is better and more seamless. Yeah. Now, with the new system, people mm. are going to be thinking, okay, it's going to be easier for me to apply for a house, mm. but is it also going to help me to get a house? Like, how does that work? Right, so the, 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 the waiting time is something that we know that customers complain. Are very concerned about, they, yes. would have, they would have issues with, yes. right? The issue really and truly is that this update allows us to know where you are right now. A lot of persons would have applied 10, 15 years ago, and they may ask, well, how come I haven't gotten a unit? But sometimes when you apply 10, 15 years ago, your financials and what you would have qualified for may not be in line with what is available right now. Although you see as a subsidized in, um, institution, the cost of construction is something that we cannot get away from. So obviously some of the units may not be what the price was 10, 15 yes. years ago when you applied. So it's not a situation that you are not going to get through the house, but it allows you now to be in a better space to qualify for what is available. The main challenge that we see based on the data is that customers would have applied for, let's say, a unit in San Fernando, but we would only have units currently in the east, just, just saying, for example. So they may think that HC has forgotten them. It's not that. It's just that where we have units building right now is possibly where you would not, where, where, not where you would have qualified or applied for. You may have wanted a single family, a single family unit, but we only have apartments. So that's where the little disconnect is concerned. But once you update the system, we will know exactly what you want, uh, what your salary is, and what you would qualify for. Yeah. Now, going back to the uh, calculator, because you can <coughs> now give, um, or you can now calculate how much you're qualified for. Does this remove the, 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 um, the state, well, the organization TTMF, or is this just a gauge of what it may look like when you're looking for financing? Right, so we still work with TTMF. Obviously, there's no other institution that gives the 2%. Um, that's a cabinet government um, relationship that we have with TTMF. So the calculator is a mirror of what TTMF would give you, but we still ask customers, obviously, although you do the self assessment, still go to TTMF or the bank, just have something official. Yeah. That calculator just allows you to see in real time what you would qualify for. Some customers may not know how to calculate the credit card um, difference and those kind of things, but TTMF is still a very vital part of us, and we want to ensure that customers, once they go to TTMF and they start their mortgage process, that they close their mortgage as soon as possible. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, is there a certain criteria that mm. the HEC looks for when they're giving out these homes? So, for example, do you have to be at a certain um, salary point? Do you have mm. to, for example, would you give preference to somebody with a family versus mm. somebody who's single? So, so we do. So the price point for HEC's units right now are between three hundred and fifty to, let's say, 900000 right? We're looking at low to middle income. That's the, the, the cabinet note, right? Although 
we, we don't have a criteria for, let's say, a family member with two or three kids. We do try to allocate persons that have, have kids. But the main issue is really what you qualify for and what areas you apply for. So, for example, somebody would have applied, let's say, f seven years ago um, for an apartment, but now they may have five kids, yeah. right? But we would not have known that. So we would contact the customer and allocate them to a two-bedroom apartment. Now they would, may say they don't want that because obviously their situation would have changed. So that's where the online portal is so important. Once you update that, you would now be, get selected for what, exactly what you wanted. Mr. Campbell, somebody mm -hmm. offering you a house and you're saying you don't want it? This happens very often. I, which, I can't which believe the public that. May not Are know you serious? That. Yeah, very often, very often. Very so you, they will reach out, mm -hmm. they apply for the home, and you mm -hmm. reach out. We have this unit available for mm -hmm. you, and they tell you no. Yes, it, yes, they do. That's why our communication team is so important to get the public to understand. As much as persons want AGC homes, there are persons that may say they don't want the units. But the main reason why persons don't want the units is because their, their circumstances would have changed, and they don't update their, their, their data. So we won't know, okay, that you have five kids now, or you, you, want, you will take a two-bedroom as opposed to a three. We don't know. So that's why the online portal is so important. Right. And when you are updating your um, status, of course, on this site, do you think it's going to be easier, for example, if you come with a co-dependent so that at least you have that two salaries mm. to kind of make it a bit more beneficial for you? Well, that's an excellent question. But I would, before I start that, I want to make it very clear that when you apply, be careful who you apply with. Yeah. Um, persons may be in a relationship and they would apply for a house together. That person who you have on your co-applicant will become the co-owner of the house. Mm -hmm. So we see this back and I'll right through where someone will get a house and then they're no longer together, it's court cases, you know. So when, when, you, when you apply for a house, be very careful who you have as your co-applicant. Now, you don't necessarily need to have a co-applicant. Um, based on the cabinet note, once your salary is 14000 and below, you'll qualify for 2%. 14 or 14? 14. 14. Yeah, yeah, not 14. 14, <laughs> right? The, the cabinet note goes up to 25000 right? right? So once your salary is 14000 and below, you get 2%. If it's 14000 and above to 25000 it's 5%. What that means is the rule of thumb that we use, if your salary is 10000 you qualify more or less for nine hundred thousand dollars once you're let's say 25 you have 30 years to retirement so it all depends on your your age your income and it allows you to basically qualify for most of the units that we have if your salary is fourteen thousand and below now most people would want to add an applicant it's not necessary but if you are married you have to have your husband or your wife there if you are common law obviously and you have kids or you're together for more than five years you really would have to add that person because we would do our legal searches the final institution would do their legal searches as well mm -hmm. so it's not that you need to add somebody but if you are in that situation you really should should add them but it, it is just to ensure that when you add somebody be careful because that person will now be part owner mm -hmm. of the house and what determines whether you get a single unit at a housing development or if you get like a flat or separate unit? What did actually determine that? that? Yeah. So, so it's really based on what your, when you applied. So if you applied and you said you had two to three kids, red flag immediately. It may be a single family unit that you may, you may want because obviously you could, you could extend, right? The, the main problem though is that when you, when you want a single family unit, there are only certain areas you could get these things in. Now just pause Mr. Mm -hmm. Campbell, the single family unit is not in the housing development, that's like a flat separate it's, It is together. the housing development. It so, is the housing yeah, development. Yeah, but it's, it's a flat unit, well, I guess you're saying a housing development, but all the housing developments mainly would come with single families and townhouses. Now, right. We yes. would have apartments in some obviously, right? Yeah, yeah. Now when you, um, when you want a single family unit, what people have to remember is we live on an island and to build a lot of single family units take up a lot of space, 5,000 square feet per unit. So most single family units you would find those things in central and south. What we have been moving towards is more apartments and townhouses for, the, for, for more space. So it's not that we, we don't want to give persons single family units, it's just that where they are available, some people may not want to go and live in Moruga or go and live in Point Fortin because they work in Port of Spain. It's just not feasible. So we look at where, where you work, what your family size is, and what you would have applied for, and then we try to, to put you based on where you qualify. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm thinking somebody who, let's say, lives in Arima, they may not want to go down south to live, but if the unit is there, mm -hmm. uh, and of course it's, it's, it's then your choice to decide if you want to go down south, if you want to stay and wait until something else comes along. Exactly. It's your, it's your choice. And again, yeah. that's where the, the, the dynamic is of updating the system. Once we have that information, we could make the best decision. Because some people may say they want anything. I want a house anywhere. No problem. When you give you the house anywhere, you, you may not want it. Because we would have allocated persons, for example, um, a unit in Maruga, a single family. They work in Port of Spain. Yeah. You know, so uh, they can't take it, unfortunately. So it's not that we are not trying to assist. It's just that the single family units can't be built, built on the east-west corridor. There's no land space. We, tr we are trying, though, to procure the land so that we could build these units. But we try to place people in what we have available. That's the main thing.
Now, Mr. Campbell, there's obviously the issue of the debt, right, and mm -hmm. the tenants owing HDC. Mm -hmm. How are we now ruling out this system and encouraging people to apply for it when we have an existing debt that we need to clear? Because I know that the, um, the minister was very, very clear that HDC has been owing its contractors. Right. So, so because the minister and my managing director would have commented on that publicly, I don't want to add or take away from what they, are, what they have said. But we do know, just the public needs to understand that we have been working with customers. And if they have issues with payments, feel free to comment to us. We can put you on a payment plan and walk through. But I don't want to comment. So there is one available. Of course, we do because have payment plans. I feel plans. like people don't know about that because I, I remember... Um, Minister was saying, you know, there are people who their rent might be maybe 150 to 500 and they're owing 15,000. Mm -hmm. So they can come in and there's a payment they, plan. They can, yeah, they can. Okay. There's a payment plan. We can put you in, 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 a, in a sequence where you could pay X amount, which will chip away at your arrears. We do work with customers where that is concerned. But the main thing is once you get the unit, pay HDC first, then pay your car loans, then, you know, we want to make sure that we are, we, are, we are priority. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Campbell, anything else before we close? Um, no, I just want to encourage the public to check out the website. Um, we basically are very proud of this website. It really allows customers to check and see where they are. They can, yeah. to they can toy with it. It allows us to really help the public, and we really want to be of service to the, to the nation. So this is really a platform, mm -hmm. a platform that we think could help the, the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago. One more thing, mm -hmm. um, uh, Mr. Campbell. For those who may have gone in to apply and didn't even get that card, mm -hmm. where do they go from there? Do they come in to get something, mm -hmm. or where do they go from there? So, so the, the, pub the persons that love to come into AGC, they can come to AGC <laughs> and we will help them. Yes. But you can still go onto the platform, click help slash support, send your credentials to the ministry, and they will then send you back an email with your, your updated information. And one more time, what's the email address? hdc.gov.tt. So, Mr. Yeah. Campbell, thank you so much for coming in thank and sharing me. some updates about the new system. That's not a problem. Thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the Divisional Manager of Corporate Service at HDC, Mr. Jeremy R. Campbell, just telling us about the new housing application fulfillment system from the HDC. You're on the Now Morning Show. We're going to take a break. and we'll be right back. Stay with us. HDC makes it easier as you journey on your way to home ownership. Have you applied for housing? Do you need to update your personal information? Need to add a co-applicant? Want to check on the status of your application? Do you need to know if you qualify for a mortgage? Want to calculate your mortgage payment? There's no need to call or come into our offices to check on your application. With HDC's updated portal, housing has been made easier. It's now effortless to securely access your housing application reference number, Change your password, update your personal information, find out if you qualify for a mortgage, calculate your mortgage payment, and stay updated on the status of your home, all online. It's fast and simple. Log on to hdc.gov.tt. Follow your entire housing application process online from start to finish. It's housing made easier.